Uh, so what we see is that uh, the, the customer requirements are really changing. Uh, so customers are becoming more mobile, uh, more digital, uh, and in that sense they become uh, the, the world becomes borderless. And, and that gives us challenges as Philip saying, okay, how can we then serve our customers in the best possible way? And we also see that that's changing uh, the perception of our, of our retail channels as well. Uh, so you have the online players, offline players, omni-channel is becoming more uh, uh, dominant. And, and that's challenging us, saying, okay, how we can support those and, and really drive then that, uh, that customer, that we can really support the consumer in the best, in the best possible way. Now, yeah, so what we've done within Philips is that we really changed our mindset. So Philips was always, uh, or uh, maybe it still is a little bit, uh, quite a traditional uh, supplier, uh, where we say, and also quite big, and, and because of the, uh, the duration that we exist, I uh, also feel that we are a little bit leading. Uh, so we need to change our mindsets a bit. It's not about the supplier who's in control, or it's the retailer who's in control. It's the consumer who has the power. Uh, so that's, that's what the change you, you get. And that means that you need to change your perception, uh, the paradigm of like, we invent what is needed, what the customer needs. No, the customer decides what he needs, and we need to change accordingly and think about uh, in new ways. So uh, in that sense, what we started with in Philips is like we started with smaller groups to look into how can we really try to um, close those gaps. Uh, so to say, okay, now let's start, start a pilot connect with one of our retail partners and say, okay, let, let's join up and see how we can then serve a certain topic like how can we go to an unlimited shelf? How can we drive that? And, and start small and, and act quickly and then see and quickly learn. So as a real entrepreneur. So that's instead of blueprinting things to death, and that's what, what in the past really yeah, a lot of times happened, is that we made that change. Not a lot. Yeah, so it's, it's, if you start it in this way, it's, it's limited investment yeah it's, it's an investment in time yeah, but also relatively easy because we have people it's about connecting the right people together and with a minimal investment you can really get a lot of learnings and and then yeah, with that minimal investment yeah, in money in that sense yeah, you can you can learn and then say okay yeah, is it beneficial for us yes if yes okay then we scale it up quickly and and I think that's that's the whole thing about the big change yeah? if you do a blueprint that takes you normally like a full year or whatever, and a lot of consultancy firms that you need and a lot of expertise. Um, so it becomes very expensive before you even start it. If you start a bit smaller, minimal investment. So the benefit, what we've gained, is that we really explored something new. Uh, and what I mentioned, uh, we, we explored things like an unlimited shelf, and, and that was really something new for us. Uh, so to be able to connect with a partner, say, okay, why can Philips not deliver direct to a consumer? Yeah, but so that we can offer more products. So for us, the gain is that we've got more products available. We don't disappoint our customers when they go to a specific um, online uh, retailer uh, because they have a preference uh, and, and that's their choice. And, um, uh, but we want to make sure that if there is, that's their presence or preference, sorry, uh, that they can choose a Phyllis product. And it's there, it's always there. And, and that's what they find important. Yeah, because customers are more demanding nowadays, as you know. It's an interesting one yeah, because blockchain, yeah, it's a bit of, um, it's in its early days. Yeah, and it's also a bit of like the, yeah, the new hype, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Everybody's talking about blockchain. Um, and we're saying, yeah, that, that's the solution. Yeah. Is it really going to be the solution? That's a big, the, big, the big question. But on the other hand, it can have advantages. Yeah. So using a blockchain, and in that sense, being able to really connect a network uh, where not one party is leading, that would be quite interesting because then we can also take out certain steps in the supply chain. Uh, and I think that's an advantage of blockchain. If we can really get that through uh, and, and it helps to overcome elements of trust, yeah. uh, which is nowadays uh, the biggest blocker uh, quite often to start an initiative because there's no real trust. And if the blockchain can help us to overcome that, then it would be quite interesting. No, so the impact could, could very much be is that we, it, it changes the landscape. Yeah, so, and also for Philips, yeah, we need to do a lot of things with customs. Oh, yeah, blockchain can help us to overcome that, that we don't need them anymore. Yeah, because it's always there. Yeah, and the, the blockchain is already indicating goods can flow through. Great advantages for our supply chain, but also towards our customers. Yeah, so how can we serve our customers better 
gives them a lot more insights and, and, and those kind of things. So we are starting to explore a little bit as well it's within Philips to see if that's something what, where we see the benefits. But you also see it's still a very difficult subject really to, to grasp in totality. And it also has a threat. If you really think it through in all the, the potentials going forward, it's also a bit like, uh, yeah, the dangerous, but it's on the other end. I think it can definitely help in certain stages in the, in the process and optimize things.